Hi, good morning, and thank you for coming at this talk. Uh, today, I'm going to show you something about the uh, cockpit and the server, and uh, how we, uh, we have integrated these uh, two projects to use the CISAD Online. A brief introduction on uh, who am I. My name is Eduardo Spadoni, and come from Italy, and I'm a web developer working at Netesis, uh, which is the, the major company sponsor of the NetServer project. And um, this is the schedule of today, a quick look. And uh, we're going to start uh, with NetServer, and uh, what is in NetServer and how to use it, and uh, the problem and improvements or uh, and solution taken. Uh, then the, change, the major changes to the UI and API, and uh, finally we can see the NetServer module structures and uh, the contribution part links uh, or community and so on. <coughs> so what is it NetServer? NetServer is an open source, completely open source operating system based on CentOS, which takes all the major release upstream packages and adds an extensive wide range modules. And uh, for example, uh, the firewall, the VPN on the web filter, or the main server, or uh, VB, VoIP, uh, VBX, uh, and so on. It's uh, completely open source, and you can contribute and uh, follow the project in uh, GitHub or community, and so on. Um, you can use NetServer in two ways. The first is uh, through the web interface is a PHP application, or via terminal. And uh, under the hood, we have uh, the automation layer, composed by three basic units, properties, templates, and events, which is similar to Ansible, Hostbar, <coughs> templates, and vendors. Properties are attributes that uh, can be added to the template, then the template is expanded and uh, became a uh, configuration file for a service, for example. The events is the, the event of the system that mm, take the properties and put it in the templates, then expand it to the configuration file, then reload services, and uh, etc. Uh, over time, we realized that uh, the actual web interface uh, has some lags, especially in uh, UI and the usability part. Also, uh, it's difficult to gain access uh, to the user on particular pages or particular application on the server. Uh, so we have to add a uh, delegation on the page. And uh, if the, the delegation in a better uh, UI can ease the, the system management and uh, also this, the life of the sysadmin. We can find uh, Studying cockpit, we find um, a, a very beautiful project that uh, can solve all of these problems. Because uh, it has an attractive UI based on butterfly, because uh, as a native dedication based on user permission, because uh, a user on the system uh, get the same permission on, uh, on the browser because the cockpit is a web shell. And, um, there's a two-way binding on um, interface and the command running on the terminal because uh, each clicks uh, on a button that runs a command and then you can reproduce the same behavior of running a command by, uh, it's, by running the command is like pressing a button. So it's easy to script action and reproduce the behavior of the UI and uh, we choose uh, these, uh, these projects to improve our, uh, our software, our net server, our uh, um, server manager. We can start to see the major changes uh, to the UI and the usability. We start uh, with a very old uh, server manager that has uh, more than 50 items on the left menu and it's hard to find settings and uh, the information was scattered because uh, each menu can arise uh, in uh, 50 items in a typical installation, so it's very difficult to see and to find uh, the right uh, settings for a uh, firewall rule, for example, or for main server, etc. The new server manager, so thanks uh, to the cockpit, is fixed to five, only five elements. 
these five elements is uh, the system, applications, software center, subscription, and terminal. In system, you can find all core part, all um, system administration core part, like, like uh, users, or host uh, names, or DNS, DHCP, etc. In the application, you can find all the server models, for example, the firewall, the VPN, the web filter. And in the software center is the place where you can insert and install new application to extend the functionality of your server. The subscription is a, an enterprise subscription to get more support for your system. And the terminal is a web, is a web terminal, um, it's like a terminal one. <coughs> In a typical configuration with this new approach, we have uh, less than 10 items. So it's really easy to find what uh, you want or and find the right settings uh, for your uh, purpose of uh, the server. Uh, it's completely responsive. Um, the base design is fixed in different items. In the top of the page, we have the name of the application and the links to the docs. In the middle area, we have the <coughs> The, the main action, create a new user, or modify a new user, or upload a certificate, or create a new host, and so on. In the bottom line, you have a uh, list or the table to recap all the users host in, in your system. We have add also the wizard that can uh, simplify the complex operation, like a creator of the cap. For example, in, in a backup, you have to set uh, the when, the where, and the how. The, the when is uh, the current job schedule. The where is the place where, where the backup will save your, uh, your files, so NFS or uh, Amazon, and so on. And, uh, and the how is the engine uh, of the backup. The server supports uh, three different engines. It is Unicity, uh, Mystic, and Hersync. Ints, we have added ints to suggest uh, particular configurations uh, and hardening the security part of the system. So, for example, if uh, your server is open and to the World Wide Web, uh, uh, the ints suggest you that you, may, you have to restrict <coughs> the access based on IP on your interface, or change the default SSH port, for example, from 22 to uh, another number. And uh, the terminal, uh, and then the software center, where is the place you can search new applications and install it or uh, group it by uh, functionalities, for example, the collaboration part, the communication part, or the security part. Each application is, in, is listed in this page like an application launcher on your smartphone. You can configure it or delete it. And, uh, you can uh, click uh, on the application and get uh, the links uh, of the application and the settings inside the, the, the server manager. Each application can be shortcutted on the left menu if uh, your particular server uh, is a part <coughs> of a firewall, for example, you can add uh, a VPN or a web filter. If the server is uh, a main server, you can add uh, the, the, the main application, etc. Uh, the, the, first, uh, the first five uh, items are fixed, and then the second one is uh, dynamic, based on the shortcut you can add later. Like the um, core part, like the, the server manager part, also the application have uh, uh, fixed uh, items. The dashboard, you can, uh, as you can see, is the first items on the menu, in which there is uh, there are um, graphs, statistics, etc. The settings and the logs and the about part are also fixed in, a, in each application. Then the, the middle line is variable, variable on the complexity of the application. Uh, then we can uh, see under the hood the API part to manage all the, the system. API is uh, used from the UI to accept command and uh, run sections. Each API is installed under the, this part and uh, can be one of these. So create, read, update, and delete uh, basically 
cloud operations than to validate, uh, to validate new inputs uh, when, for example, you have to add a new user, you validate API set that uh, ID doesn't exist, and uh, the execute is used to run raw outputs, and the ins is the, the API that suggests you an hardening operations uh, previously seen. Each API has an input output format uh, that, is in JSON, that is in JSON, and uh, the raw format is, um, is a standard output of command without any parsing. The execution process uh, starts with uh, an initialization that uh, uses the NetServer exec library that is a wrapper around the cockpit spawn command, which takes uh, the path of the API and an object to exec it. The object is in JSON format, then the callback of success and the callback of, of error is based on the exit code on the runs command. This uh, library translates uh, the command in uh, an echo to the API and passing it um, an, a JSON object. Then the result is, for example, in this case, the list users, all users in the system. Each modules is, a RP and is an RPM package that can be installed inside the system, and uh, the server cockpit is the major core part that provides all the um, basic um, API, for example, the, the user, the, the certificate of, uh, of the system, the DNS, uh, the host names, etc. Each new, new application installed in the systems provides its own API that can be the server firewall, for example, provides uh, the managing of the rules, uh, managing of the, uh, the hosts, etc. Et um, a quick recap on the API part. Uh, each API is installed in the system and can be used uh, by other models. Each API has a user permission matching the pseudo part of the, of the, of the user. Input output is in JSON format or raw format um, in execute API. And uh, process uh, that um, print on the standard output uh, the, the, the stream is automatically processed to the UI via, via the, the cockpit stream arguments. We can see also the net server module structure part, that is an RPM, and uh, it's composed by different parts. The first one is the automation layer, C4, with uh, uh, configuration properties, events, and uh, templates. The, the configuration for sudo of the API, uh, each, uh, each new API is a matching sudo permission of the user, so the user can or not, or not can or can't the, um, execution the, the application. The, the API part is installed under the path uh, uh, user lib exec and server API. And the UI is installed with static files inside the standard cockpit path, uh, this US share cockpit. And uh, the manifest and the license are also installed in the system to see, for example, metadata, etc. And uh, each, uh, each um, net server module starts with a Git repository that is built uh, with, uh, with a specific configuration. And uh, each Git repository uh, have uh, these uh, standard uh, directories and files, these uh, API and UI, the Transifex configuration for internationalization, the Travis uh, C configuration to automatically build the RPM package uh, on each uh, push on the repository. And then uh, the prep sources prepare uh, <coughs> static files, the create links created here on yeah. the internet server. And uh, the JSON is the manifest uh, of the application with metadata. And the spec is the spec file to build the RPM package. Take all the, um, the stuff inside the Git repository and build the, the RPM. If you want to contribute to the server project, uh, the GitHub, the GitHub link uh, is this one, the issue tracker is this one. We have uh, also a large community of members that uh, you can ask or uh, 
contribute uh, only with the uh, great or uh, bad uh, hunting. The website of the project is this one, and they get <coughs> the deadline to create a new, a new module of that server. The link is this one. I think uh, that's all. Uh, if you have any questions, or uh, we, can, uh, we can finish. How time? time? Uh, six months uh, to three person to the design of the application, uh, of the part of the application, UI and the UI part. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Is there some kind of uh, rights management, or is every user basically super user? Very no, well. no. It's a uh, it's user as a. Um, as a permission inside yeah. the system, and that user can log in inside the cockpit interface and runs command on the with the API mm -hmm. basic on uh, his permission. Yeah, if you yeah, if you want to super yeah. user a uh, um, particular user, you you have to add it on the admin group. Mm -hmm. and then uh, it became an, uh, a super user. Then with sudo, yeah. before run a command, the matching permission on the API. Translate is uh, permission to a super user. Okay. What did you do in ter terms of input sanitization? Uh, ah, sanitization. Uh, cockpit has a uh, um, parser on the, you know, this part that sanitification of all the inputs uh, passing in the API, but um, it's uh, its execution of the API is an array that is uh, already sanitized before sending it to the API. It's just one input. Translating to an array with arguments. Standard input uh, to the API and then the path to the API. Yes, this, uh, this API validates uh, each input and uh, check if the input is valid before changing the system and before uh, add a new user, for example, or the new host. A validation layer uh, takes care of uh, this input. Because, uh, as in the previous slide, uh, we have an active, an active support for a particular um, uh, things that NetServer server needs. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, the UI and UX part, or the native delegations, or uh, easy to script actions, because uh, the UI part is uh, easy to replicate uh, with scripts, because each clicks is a command. You can reproduce the UI behavior in an easy way. Yes. 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 Y